But a year ago I did a video where I talked about how annoyed I was that I was making so many random beginner sewing mistakes and it was especially annoying because I've actually been sewing for over 30 years and I felt that I really shouldn't be doing that kind of mistakes at this point in my sewing life but I did and then I decided that I want to do something differently and what I did differently is that I have now for over a year used something that's called deliberate practice to and I've applied that to my sewing and if you want to know the results of this hard work, well, that's what we're going to talk about today. First, you might want to know, what is deliberate practice? Well, it's a coined term by a Swedish scientist that is called Anders Eriksson. And it basically means that a highly structured practice with the specific goal of improving performance. And while it's normally used in sports and perhaps learning instruments, I figured it could also be applied to sewing. So I devised three strategies to use for my sewing learning process. And the first goal I set for myself was always challenge myself. And what a challenging year it has. So I can definitely say that that's something I've done. For instance, I have made two pair of trousers after a long pant making hiatus that actually lasted from 2009 to 2017. And both these products, I was very focused on both how to to make the best possible assembly and also perhaps even more important to actually achieve good fit. So I spent a lot of time working on that and I will say though that the second pair I pretty much think that I nailed the fit for my body type. So yeah that was goal number one. I did challenge myself and that was just one example of how I challenged myself. And another thing that I've decided during 2017 is to really challenge myself when it comes to cover stitching, an area which I struggle and I know a lot of you do too. So I really tried to up my games, for instance, on my latest active wear products, I actually cover stitched curved seams using the mesh panels and a lot of other really tricky cover stitching that I haven't tried before. So I do think that I've made good strides when it comes to cover stitching, still tons to learn. I don't feel finished by any scoop of imagination, but at least I feel that I've definitely challenged myself when it comes to pushing my cover stitching skills as well. And another goal that I set up for myself is being systematic in my practice. And what that means is that I don't just sit down, try to figure something out really quickly and then just start sewing on the actual fashion garment. Instead, I have spent a lot of time testing new techniques on scraps before I've actually done the real thing. For instance, when I tried to learn the industrial method for inserting zipper pockets on knits, on sports garments. I spent an entire evening just trying on scraps and zippers to figure out the method. And it took me, I think about five or six hours before I was actually happy with the result. And then I went on to add the, the zipper to the actual t-shirt that I was making the zipper pocket for. And another example, which is even more extreme, is my struggles with the binder attachment for my cover stitch machine. Uh, that is really hard to work when it comes to stretchy liquor fabric. So in order to master that, I actually spent over eight hours, about over three days, just practicing, practicing, practicing on difficult fabric. In the beginning, all my samples made me want to cry. It was a disaster. I mean, I can't really, <laughs> I've sort of tried to block it out now, but, but hour, hour after hour, my skills started to improve. And on day three, actually, I was able to do some binding that actually looked really good, if I say so myself. And I was like, this is unbelievable. But I can mostly credit that to the fact that I put the hours in. Yeah, you can't always do that. But hopefully next time I won't have to spend another eight hours before I do binding. But who knows, at least I know that I can succeed if I put the hours in. And the third goal I set for myself was to only sew the tricky things when I can fully concentrate which means that a lot of sewing is now done on the weekends and not on the weekday evenings because that's usually when I'm really tired and stressed and, you know, exhausted basically. So I can't really wrap my mind about around the, more of the tricky aspects of sewing. So I moved that to the weekend and I will say absolutely it has made me make a lot less mistakes and, you know, not really having to mess things up because I, I was just so confused. I didn't read the instruction properly and all the things that can happen when you sort of try to plow through instead of seeing, am I actually focused enough to do the sewing on, on this kind of tricky area? To sum it up, I will say that I've made huge strides 
when it comes to my sewing skill for the last year. I would say I probably made more advances to the last year that I had done perhaps if in five years previously. So that is a testament to how effective this approach is. But I will say though there are some drawbacks as well. And one is that it's quite exhausting because I've, I've picked so many projects this year that really challenged my skills. It has kind of been like, oh, that's how I felt when it's over because I'm so exhausted. And another drawback is obviously that, as I said, I need to be fully concentrated. So for instance, currently I'm in the midst of finishing my book about sewing activewear. So that takes up all my mental space. So I'm currently actually having a project which requires some tricky sewing that has been lying on my cutting table now for quite a while because I don't feel I ha I'm in the right headspace right now to actually tackle this project sort of on the fly because I really need to focus a lot in order to achieve a good result. But those are the only drawbacks I think. But to sum it up, the pros vastly outweigh the cons, at least I think so. And if you're struggling with something similar, I can highly recommend that you try to apply some of the, the principles of deliberate practice to your sewing, even though yeah, it does take its time. And well, I say it's worth it. And when I look inside my wardrobe and I see the finishing, I see the fit of my garments, I can definitely pat myself on the back because it looks much better than it did a couple of years ago. So it's very visible proof that my skills have improved when I have applied this deliberate practice. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to get more videos from me and also check out my blog, The Last Digital Combo, because there I have actually done a lot of tutorials on the things that I've learned during this year of deliberate practice. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye!